Welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K Triple Threat Tournament. We are on to round four, and gonna be starting out with Dyth versus DoD, or Dyth made us do this versus DoD on Cap Basin, a map which I have not seen before. But this looks like a more normal map, kind of Delicy Dry style, just a little bit less split up, I suppose. Anyway, yeah, so we have DoD again, so Mod Death Claw, Plymouth Fury, and Wukalar against Team Dyth made us do this, a team we have not yet seen before, Dyth 68, Orange Sky, and Matthew Whiteman. Two of those players have not yet set up their commanders, so I'm not quite sure, I'm guessing this is, yeah, Matt, Matt Whiteman going for the Air Factory, and Orange Sky going for the Shieldbot Factory. So it looks like you're going to be getting this going in a second. So yeah, this is very much easily a DSD style thing. And it looks like the players are going for that. Spiders over the north, which, again, no surprise because that's the hilly side of the map. And air in the center, which I find kind of surprising. Oftentimes you see vehicles in the center, but at the same time, Orange Guy also not going for rovers. So no one going for rovers on the western side. For Dyth made us do this. Team DoD, on the other hand, they are going for jump bots, tanks. There's no surprise there. And spiders. So Wilkla are going for the spiders on the north side, but not really as close to the north as we saw with Dyth. Which is an interesting choice, but that should work okay. At any rate, DoD with the tanks, they're going to have a bit of an easier time crossing the center in theory. At least in the later game, but I'm not really sure how it's going to work. Because the thing is, they still have to actually build the units, and tanks, of course, are quite expensive. So getting to that point is going to be a little bit tricky. At the same time, Plymouth Fury going for all of the puppies. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I mean, we also have a bunch of fleas coming in, but fleas are often used for scouting. And also, fleas have just generally been popular as a frontline assault force for spiders because you can get a lot of them for cheap. Poppies, on the other hand, poppies kill themselves when they attack. Like, intentionally kill themselves when they attack. Unlike fleas. Fleas do kill themselves when they attack, but that's just an accident. That, that's not actually how they work. They just happen to. Puppies kill themselves to attack. And there's not a lot of reclaim on the map, so you can't get a lot of free puppies right now. I would kind of expect we see more puppies later on in the game. Or anything? I'm really not sure what Plymouth Fury is planning to go for here. Like, are they planning to go for... Archangels? Or not frogs, I mean frogs. Or toads, rather. Are they planning to go for... Like, firewalkers, maybe? Break defenses later on? I don't know. Jump out this early doesn't make sense if you're not building anything out of it. Mod of Death Claw, on the other hand, going for a lot of fleas, but not really going forward with them. So right now... I'd say map control is pretty much entirely on Dyth made us do this aside. Like, they're the ones doing it all. They they have got fleas everywhere. They've got air units everywhere. They know exactly what's being built up. They've expanded a little bit slower, but they have a lot more room to expand. At least to expand safely. Karachi is coming in, though, so that will at least threaten a few things. But having been spotted, it's not going to be threatening too much. I mean, what is it going to hit? I mean, I guess it could hit the front side here where Dyth's commander is, but... That's essentially a Lotus, so good luck with that. And I suppose it might decide to go further. I don't know. It's like it might decide to go further. Maybe go around the back, take out the the Weaver year. Maybe take out one of the factories. That might actually work okay. Come to think of it, like attack the Weaver, start taking it out. But not here. No, Matthew White Man's commander preventing basically any real damage. A bit of fire on the factory, but not much. Other one over to the south, getting a bit more damage. Getting a little bit of damage on this convict, but not enough to kill. So ultimately, no real damage from modded Death Claw's tanks here. Same time, though, Wooklar finally pushing forward with the fleas. Not sure what they're going to accomplish, though, because at this point, there are enough defenses on the Dyth made us do this side. Now, the fleas, they might be able to attack up here, get a couple of these metal extractors. That's about it. And that's assuming nothing kills them in the meantime, and really, the Swifts that are already in play could kill them in the meantime. So, I don't see anything working out for Wokalar here. Although we do- okay, we do actually see Toads. Okay, so that was what the Jump Bot Factory, I guess, was for. On top of the Yetans, but the Yetans were- I mean, it's just, you know, a bit of an opportunistic move. I don't really see that being why you'd have the Tank Factory, of course. And there's the Fleas going to the Outlaws, because Outlaws kill any tiny thing that comes near them. It's how they work. So again, yeah, Dyth made us do this having a massive amount of map control. Very quickly set up to get that center expansion too, but yeah, the main thing being the map control and the owl didn't even go down. Sheesh! Less than 4 HP, 3.6 HP, but the owl keeps going. 
It is, however, still on a patrol route, and I don't really see that. No, nah, it's going to be. Seriously, this is going to die. Die, save it. No, it's Matthew Whiteman. Never mind. Matthew Whiteman, save it. No, that's, that's dead. That, that owl's dead. It has seen its last thing. I really has kind of Yeah, as Buddhist puts it, rip bad micro. But yeah, again, this important thing here is what is going on with the units being built and stuff being destroyed. And what's going on is that the north side is basically being taken over by dice. Their fleas are wiping out everything, and not nothing's really gonna stop them. I mean, the well, okay, the weaver's gonna, other welder rather is gonna stop them, but nothing else is gonna stop them. Ooh, coward of the Kodachi, but at the cost of a raven, not really worth it. Like overall, modern death claws, they're the most forward, but they're not really defending super well, and they're having a bit of a hard time actually holding on to literally anything. Especially as this welder tries to fight back against the redback, and unfortunately does not have the range to actually deal with it. Same with the puppies coming in here, not really managing to do all that much either, because puppies don't have a huge amount of range. However, moderators are coming in that will be able to counter the forces having been built by Dyth over to the north side of the map. But I worry it's too little too late, considering the economic disadvantage and the fact that the attrition... Actually, the attrition is not too bad. The attrition has been relatively even. It's just the economy that's definitely going against everything. Like, it's going against all this stuff over here. Like, really, really, Team Duty has nothing. They've got nothing. They've lost two moderators to a flea. Took revenge on the flea, but still, lost two moderators to a flea. Did get rid of the redback, though, which is good. But of course, this raven's right here. It's just going to take out one of them. But that... Ooh, that was the right one to take out. That was the one that had to reload. Hey, and this moderator might still be able to get a kill. But it at least is not going to be a totally free kill. So good job, Raven. You did your job. You got rid of the moderator and got rid of the moderator that did not just fire, which is kind of a lucky thing, but hey, it worked. And I guess it's not really luck. If you know the moderator that is nearest, it's probably going to be the one that fires. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was the thinking in the targeting, but still, good targeting, Matthew Whiteman. And we do have a bit of a counterattack over to the south, but this feels like a desperation last stand. There aren't really any units in the back that are actually going to be following up this attack, even if it went well. And it's not going well. The Racketeer... No, it's not even Racketeers, is it? Yeah, it is Racketeer. The Racketeer coming in here is disarming a lot. And the Ogre not really able to do much as a result. I mean, able to get a bit of anti-air, because it is Flex AA. That's about it. At the same time, though, Pyro's coming in here. Those will be nice for helping get through those shields, but again, Outlaws. Outlaws just doing their job. The Ogre were able to come in here and completely destroy that Outlaw set. So at least there's no Outlaws left. That is the one saving grace from this entire fight, is that the Outlaws have at least been killed by the, mod by the Ogre, thanks to the use of the Pyros. So, they're dead, but at great cost. And I don't see any follow-up forces coming in to actually deal with the fact that there are no, mod or no Outlaws left. I mean, at this point, Fleas would actually be very useful. This is the point where Fleas could come in and do a lot of damage, but no. Right now, I don't really see Wukalar going for anything. Primarily going for the Hermits trying to get this north side under their control. But that's all I can see. That That's really it. Otherwise, no. Thankfully for the Team DoD, the economy is not too uneven, despite map control discrepancies. This north side being contested is still giving them a bit of a bit of room like not much they are still behind 20 metal per second 20 30 metal per second but considering the actual amount of metal in play that's not huge like it's you know 20 percent ish so it's nowhere near like a two-fold difference oh never mind it is a two-fold difference it was just the reclaim was making up for it so yeah actually never mind team dod is again having a bit of a hard time harder time than it looked I mean, they might be able to at least do a bit of damage, maybe along the center? No, that, this is too much. Way too much. And that, this factory, or this metal extractor isn't even up yet. Now it's up. And now I expect we're going to see a lot of overdrive. Yeah, there's the pylon coming in here just to set up a pylon chain. So that all 146 metal per second is able to go into this 5 metal per second base metal extractor. That's easily going to be a 12, 15 metal per second extractor in, like, two minutes. No problem. Still over to the north side, we do see that firewalker I was thinking about earlier. And I guess it's handy against the fleas, but it's not really in a position to do much. And unfortunately, having to shoot uphill like that does reduce its effectiveness quite a lot. So right now, I don't really see a huge amount of opportunity for Team DoD to actually break this spider force coming in here. Granted, the fleas can't really come in that close. The Stardust and Lotus is going to stop them. 
but it doesn't even matter. I mean, the distract that's kind of almost a distraction considering the amount of damage going on in the south. It's still nice to have, but yeah, like, what good is it going to do? The fleet's coming in here, getting rid of the thugs. Or, sorry, the hermits. And the hermits can't really do anything against the fleas. They're just nicely auto-swarming away from that, away from all those shots, so... Good dodging coming in there. The firewalker comes close enough. It will be a different story, but that's not happening right now. At the same time, we're just seeing Team Dyke, Orange Sky in particular, going to the south and wiping everything out. Thunderbirds on top of the shield ball coming in here. I mean, I I admire what Mod of Deathclaw is trying to do, but I don't see them actually managing to accomplish much. They, they are holding on. That is something. At the same time, we do have Blitz coming in here trying to harass what can. Get rid of one of the pylons, too. Actually, get rid of the metal extractor on top of that. Never mind. I take what I, back what I said about Mod of Deathclaw. They are managing to do quite a bit of damage, take out a lot of the center, and make some pressure. But the problem, of course, is how much is that pressure going to last? How consistent is that going to be? At this point, all the forces coming in, apart from that, are having a very difficult time doing anything. Servers being built up. Ah, oh, that is... That is a little bit late. I... Not really much of a defensive structure for one thing, but also when your opponent is knocking on your door is not the time to be building artillery pieces. That is the time to maybe build defenses or have already had built defenses. And rally the units you have. Which is a lot of pyros, actually, but again, might be a problem with the outlaws. Although, that's enough pyros. That should be more than enough to actually get rid of all this shield ball force. But again, it's not really going to be relevant if they're not actually in battle. Lunar Fury, however, coming down here. Not line moving. All these powers are one in a row, but it might not even matter so much in this case. The outlaws, the outlaw being what it is, going one at a time might have been a good idea, all things considered. Because then the outlaws only hitting a few of them at once instead of all of them at the same time. But unfortunately, that felon still had enough, and the thugs definitely had enough. Not gonna do much damage off the pyros. That is what the pyros should have been together, but. Yeah, I can see against the Outlaws, you might want to go in one at a time, maybe. That's arguable, but I can kind of see why. But for the rest of the force, no. Same time, though, we do have units coming in multiples at a time, with the Hermits over the top from Wulkalar at least able to deal a little bit of damage, get rid of some defenses here and there, but the Crabs, there's two Crabs. That's two Crabs too many for Wulkalar to actually deal with. Especially when they're all armored up like this, it's pretty much over for this attack. It was a nice shot. Got rid of a couple defenses. Did a bit of damage. Put a bit of pressure on. But unfortunately, there's nothing expanding in the background. So, despite that, it was some damage dealt, but nothing was even taken for a brief period. While at the same time, the south side has been destroyed, and no one's taken the reclaim. And I expect we'll probably be seeing Team Death made us do this, have the reclaim. I think there's actually some convicts with this team. Or this entire shield ball. No, the shield ball has no convicts. It should, but it doesn't. Now, if it threw in some convicts in the shield ball, that's more shields, and also you'd have reclaim potential while you're going along. I mean, there's one convict over here, but that's that's it. There's another convict in the back. Okay, never mind. There's a convict actually in the back repairing the commander, so that will be in the shield ball, at least. That provides the shields for the felons. I mean, this is a lot of shields for the felons. Two Aspas is coming in. That is... That is quite the battery. And on top of that, getting rid of all the frontline economy. This has got to be painful. Team DoD, again, holding on as best they can. And really, the north side is doing quite well. I mean, we're seeing Wukalar doing a fine job holding everything in place. These these hermits are managing to keep things alive, and the defenses are also managing to keep everything from falling apart completely, but there's only so much that can do. Like, really, that's, that's kind of limited in what it can actually accomplish, considering that the south side is basically falling apart. The economy is a two-fold difference. Yeah, this is... Is there anything going on? Anything in the back? We do have more ogres coming in, some more flex... We do have an ultimatum being built up, actually. I'm not sure what is meant to destroy. I suppose to wipe out the shield ball entirely. Ooh. That was a dead fusion plant in the middle of Mod of Death Claw's base. Yeah, that's one thing to bear in mind. I'm not sure the players realize this, but when you build something, if you hold space in X, you can actually see what its explosion radius would be. And that'll tell you... Like, the number is how much damage it deals. The actual circle is the distance at which it deals all, some damage. It, it's, a, it's a fall off, so it doesn't deal as much damage at the edges as it does at the nearby. But yeah, fusion reactors, it's something like... Oops, no. Ah, no. Fusion reactor. Fusion reactor is... Yeah. Actually, you can see when you're building in the first place. 2400 at a fairly large radius. About three fusion reactors worth of radius. So yeah, that is a thing to bear in mind. Like, whenever you're building anything, the, the explosion radius is just there. 
So you want to be mindful of that because you don't want to have it explode in your face. Like it just did. That's a bit of a tip in base building that I had to learn the hard way too. Anyway, modern Deathclaw, pretty well done. They do have one worker left, so they do have a few options right now. But again, it's a few options in the face of a giant wave coming at them. Like, they don't have much of a chance. The ultimatum is, however, up. So it's actually doing a fair bit of damage. But it's just it's finding that one position. If it's able to get a nice shot in the felon, it has to almost walk halfway into the shield ball to do it. But if it gets a nice shot on the felons, it could actually wipe out all this stuff. But I don't see that happening. Flim of the Fury does not seem to be keen on microing it into the shield ball where it's going to be most useful. Which is a real shame because it's doing literally nothing right now. Like, it's not hitting the air. But now, Flim of the Fury, I don't think they're as familiar with the ultimatum as they would need to be to really get the effectiveness out of it. So unfortunately, that is going to be it for Flim of the Fury's base. Leaving Wooklar as the only member of Team DoD that's still really in any meaningful terms in play. But again, they're surrounded on all sides with a massive economic disadvantage, like an order of magnitude economic disadvantage. The fact that this has even gone on this long is actually a testament to how well they've set up their defenses, but still, it's only so long, and that's pretty much over now. And it, yeah, that is it. That is it. We have the final shield ball assault, which the old team might have been able to stop, but was not set up properly to stop. And that is going to be it. The ultimatum is all a matter of getting close and then hitting things with the line splash. Although, on the other hand, Thunderbird coming in here, at least doing what it can. Wolklar is losing their commander in the process, but hey, the Hermits are at least able to take advantage of the fact that the shields are down for the time being. Plummet Fury also losing their commander, but at this point, it really doesn't matter. The ultimatum, however, is still up. Is still able to do a little bit of damage. There we go. That's what we wanted to see. Hit some of those felons, take it out. At least it slows down the shield ball a little bit, but again, the north side's being completely assaulted, and really at this point, Team DoD, they long since lost the match. Like, this is just trying their best to do what they can to at least stay almost sort of in the game, but it's not happening. The ultimatum is going to go down as soon as the bombers actually target it. Yeah, and that is going to be it. So with that, Team Dyke made us do this is just... Like, they're already dead! Just surrender! Okay, well, at any rate, it looks like we are going to see a towel thrown for the last five units in the... Or last six units of that side. Or maybe not. I don't know. Nope, they're just going to be killed. This is, this is a fight to the last unit. I mean, it's a tournament, so I understand. But at the same time... No. That, that was a bit too long. That, that was... That, the loss had happened a little while earlier. But anyway, that is that. So at this point, Dice made us do this winning against DoD and Astro winning against Cosmo as well. So two games have been done. We still have Fireplug GBC and Spark for Manu versus Team Drone or Goobers as they're calling themselves. I'm not sure which of those is still going. Let's see. From here we have Goobers versus Spark Manu. It has been going for 20 minutes. Fireplug and GBC, both of them for going for 20 minutes. Uh, I mean, that's... That was a reasonably long time. I kind of want to see... Okay, what's probably going to happen for the next round? So at this point, if you look at the standings... Where are the standings? We refresh the standings. Should see Ashton and Spark from Manu. Oh, okay, so at this point, Ashton's won. If Spark from Manu wins, they're against... A okay, so whoever wins this is against Astra next. Wow, Ashton's doing really well. Fireplug, if they win against GVC, they are going to be... Still pretty well top four. But I feel like GBC versus Fireplug is probably the more relevant game right now. Let's go check that out. And yeah, I've switched over to this because we're gonna need it. It's it's gonna be fast. Like, ludicrously fast. All right, come on. Let's go. All right. Done. Or just about. This is going to be a bit fast, but it should work. Okay. So, we have 
stuff. All right, right off the bat, we have GBC on the west and Team Goobers on the east. This drones team, and certainly start, starting off, it is relatively even. Not a whole lot of damage being dealt either way, but it looks like we are going to be seeing... Looks like spiders. Flea is going over to the north side of the map. Very much taking the north. This is what I wanted to see last game, is spiders actually taking the north side expansions. And it looks like we are seeing FFC take a lot of the north side expansions, in fact. Sorry, Fireplug, not Coopers. Team Fireplug. We're seeing FFC take a lot of it. Actually, nice raid going on the south side of the map, which should be able to deal quite a bit of damage. But Fleas, the Fleas doing what Fleas do best. This, okay, the Swifts are stopping them, but at least they managed to get a bit of pressure on, deal a bit of damage. Same time, though, FFC managing to take the north side of the map, along with Hokumoka, more or less. But still, this, this game is still relatively even between the two teams, as GBC trying to struggle a little bit to hold the south side. Looks like we are seeing Fireplug actually take out a lot of the south side with a bunch of blitzes taking the center completely. That center metal extractor is Fireplux. So a good early advantage for GBC being somewhat undone by Fireplux. Nice rating here. Still, though, we are going to be seeing a little bit of more of a north side assault. Here's the fleas coming in here. The Lotus, however, should be numerous enough to get rid of the fleas that are coming from Hokomoko. So that won't really work. At the same time, Firepluck is able to at least push down and keep the center control in the hands of Team Firepluck. Of course, this thing right here, Hokomoko, trying to push in a bit of a surround on the defensive structures. That's going to be a little difficult to push through. At the same time, the Blitz is coming forward. Not able to do much. Firepluck unable to get a huge amount of value off those Blitzes, but at the very least, they are able to get some damage in. Keep pushing this back. Keep defending that giant metal extractor. Now it's just a matter of how they're going to set the overdrive. And there's all the solar collectors to do exactly that. While at the same time, the north side of the map being shifted over a little bit, but mostly in favor of Hokomoko. A lot of defenses haven't gone down. Hokomoko's little flea assault. FFC still has a fair amount of defenses, and not a whole lot of follow-up is coming in. While at the same time, a bunch of fleas coming to defend against basically this entire horde. But that may not be enough. FFC's commander should be at least manage to survive well enough. The defenses do survive well enough well. The Stinger is doing a fine enough job. Now, the Crab is in play, and while at the same time, there, we are seeing some damage being dealt by the Redbacks here. I'm oh, sorry, the Recluses here. There are enough Fleas that the Recluses cannot go too far forward. At the same time, enough Fleas that these Widows coming in here might be able to get the stun on. Oh, and those Fleas are not in the right position to actually protect the Crab. I kind of wish they were. Now, over on the south side, we are getting a Tremor here to try to help get rid of some of the forces that are coming forward. The Grizzly is able to survive whether the Tremor is assault, but that's about it. Same time on the north side, the Widow is not managing to really do anything at all. On the south side, those Tremors are just wiping out everything. I'm kind of curious if we're going to see any units coming in a kind of a rolling barrage approach. But it looks like primarily this is just to defend everything for as long as it takes for Team Fireblock to build up the units they need. Same time over on the north side, we are seeing the Fleas come in and get their butts completely kicked. I mean, getting rid of anything but the Red Recluses is the problem. And there's a lot of Lotuses that are protecting the Recluses. But at the same time, that does allow for the crab to get further forward enough, but the Widows do stop the crab from actually doing anything, destroying them, allowing the Redbacks, sorry, the Rexes to get rid of that crab. And actually, it looks like we do have FFC disconnecting. Oh, a lot of disconnections. Okay. Okay, disconnections and squad mode stuff. At this point, we... Okay, let's team Fireplex just decided, okay, we're just going to go in. All right, well, at this point, we are still with an advantage towards Team Fireplug. A little bit of an awkward situation. Basically, is right and Fireplug running 2v, 2v3, but all together as a single team. And full control of their units, so this might work actually a bit better. I'm a little surprised we're not saying that teams generally go for this kind of squad control, because that's, that's often been powerful, but no, we aren't seeing that at all. Still, though, Scorpion over the north continuing to try to contest that northern side and actually managing to do that. The crab going down as a result of that scorpion. Trying to help get rid of it. No, it's not enough. And with that, I mean, and the sheer amount of economic advantage that Team Fireplug had, we see the towel thrown in for the GBC. Because once again, they are knocked down into... Well, I don't know what's going to knock down. I mean, they're, they're one in three at this point. So yeah, this is not a great position for them to be in. But Fireplug... Their team has guaranteed their position in that top... Well, they more or less guaranteed their position in the top four. Three to one? Like, at this point, there's still a couple more rounds. So, we're only about halfway through. So, I suppose I'm speaking a little bit too soon. Normally, these are five-round Swiss, not seven-round Swiss. So, it's a little bit of a different situation. Actually, oh, are we... Are we getting a resign? Not sure what's going on here. We, If you look at the bracket, we're seeing that it has actually shifted very slightly. 
We're seeing fewer teams now. I'm not sure what's going on here. Like, did a team decide to surrender, or what? Or what? Okay, DoD has surrendered. Okay. Yeah, Wukalar is unavailable, so for the rest of the tournament, you're not seeing Team DoD. Good thing I caught them when I did, because they did indeed ask for it. Like, they asked for me to actually cast them. It looks like Spark Manu versus, GB, or versus Drone is still ongoing. Eh, I need to get more water. I mean, it's... We're going to see... A match like, or actually, right on Sparkman and Drone, they're pretty high up together. What is the standings right now? Oh, DoD and CSM have both surrendered. Okay. So at this point, Sparkman 3 0, Drone 2 and a tie. Oh, I see DoD. Yeah, I guess they did have a bit of a hard time. Oh. Well, at any rate, might as well see what's going on in Goobers vs. Spark from Manu, but I feel like this is going to be kind of painful. I'm sorry. It's, I mean, I grant you guys probably want to see this. You, you probably want to see as many matches as I can possibly cast. But this is going to be kind of fast. Although the fact that it is about half an hour long, running at like 5x speed or whatever, does make things a little bit easier. I mean, in the sense that it's, you know, it's 5x speed, so it just, it just flies. It's like 5-6 minutes and you're done. I'm just going to miss a lot because it is going at 5x speed. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Oh, come on. There we go. Alright, so, this is now Drone's team. Goober's on the le on the right, and Spark from Manu on the left. And it looks like... Again, we're seeing a lot of fleas over to the north, because no surprise there. Air going built up for Malric. Drone are... Yeah, going for the tanks. Okay. At the same time, we have rowers being built up, along with air over by the western team, over by Spark Manu. So, and it, like, well, right off the bat, Spark Manu taking that center expansion, just going for it. Don't even want to try anything else. Just go for that center expansion. Make sure to protect it. That's going to be a little bit risky. We saw last game that... So holding the center expansion is something you actually had to put an effort into, and if you lose it, that could be losing a lot. I mean, Team GBC had that center expansion in the last match, the fast-forwarded one, and then lost it. And Fireplex just held on to it for dear life, and it works. And at this point, we are seeing a similar thing happen again with Pillager coming, or Emissary rather, coming in here, getting rid of that expansion, getting rid of that Metal Extractor, and Western, uh, the Spark from Manu still having a bit of a tough time. At the same time, the north side... We are seeing again Team Drone, just like Team Fireblock, able or Goobers rather, just like Team Fireblock, able to hold that north side, though a little bit less convincingly. Actually, 400 is doing a fine job just maintaining control over that north side, making sure that Jazz Cash can't easily take it. It's gonna be a little bit hard to actually continue to hold on to, but it's easy enough. And at this point, there is a nice overlook on this one metal extractor, so the defensive position is in favor of Team Spark from Manu. At the same time. We do have a bit of Rapture coming here. Rapture coming in, trying to get rid of some power infrastructure. Not able to destroy too much, but still able to at least cause a bit of disruption. And at the same time, center expansion. Again, we're seeing the same thing we saw last game. The Goobers are taken, and the Eastern team does take that center expansion after not having it. But at the same time, we do have Emissaries coming in. So Spark Commander still has ways of taking that center expansion. It's not over yet. And I like the fact that Spark Commander actually did build a little bit of a wall here. Not going to help out when it comes to the drone side, but it is going to help out for everyone else. And yeah, there's the crab in the center. Okay, so the north side is basically secured for Spark from Manu. Much unlike the last time. Drone, however, again, insisting on taking that center expansion, and again, the Emissary is coming in, insisting that, no, you do not get that. Granted, if that expansion is up for, like, seven seconds, it is paid for itself. But still. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Oh, not seven, sorry, 15 seconds. 15 seconds, 75 per, and then, yeah. It's five metal per second. So yeah, if it's up for, seven, for 15 seconds, that was not 15 seconds. So as long as the pressure can be maintained in the center, it'll at least be fine. Won't let drone take too much out of that. And at the same time, overall, the, the economy is quite even. So we are seeing a relatively even economy. However, drone looks like they're going to set up that iris push. Now the cornea up, likely we're going to see a morph into an iris very shortly. While at the same time, 
Bit of a push over to the south side of the map. Not a whole lot of defenses. Entirely emissaries that will be able to secure the center by making sure the emissaries are dead. Ogre is up to try to stop this, but it's not enough. The fleas are able to completely bypass the ogre, start wiping out metal extractors, wiping out caretakers. Unfortunately, being a bit careless in how they approach the caretakers and dying to the death explosions, but still able to wipe out about 10 metal extractors, two caretakers. That is a nice blow. At this point, Spark Command is going to have a much harder time using their metal than they, well, they previously had, which they already was kind of getting close to excess. But at the same time, like I said, the northern side has been completely secured. So, yeah, this isn't going to be a huge problem. I mean, you got the servers. Now we're seeing the servers actually used for what it should be used for. Same time, though, the center of the map, we are seeing drone. They're confident now. They don't have to worry about emissaries destroying that center expansion anymore. So they are setting that up. And it looks like the cornea is primarily being used as a firebase. Not being used for hours. It's just being used to keep units around this expansion without being visible. Which is a bit of a clever move. I like that. That's That certainly makes sense. But, at this point... What the... Oh. I don't know who won. I'm guessing Drone's team won, but I guess the game ended while I was back in the catch-up stage. So, yeah, it looks like Drone's team probably won as a result of just managing to... Keep pushing forward. I was a bit worried this was happening. This is actually why I was not entirely keen on casting... On doing their cast on the rejoin. Because... Yeah, that was probably going to happen. And actually, you can tell even as it is now that a lot of damage is being dealt over to this base. And, I mean, the Singularity Reactor has not been destroyed, but pretty much the entire south side base has been destroyed. And, yeah, drones coming in. Once that center expansion got taken and secured, that was kind of it. That was a very confident position from which basically Team Drone, the Goobers, could actually deal with stuff. Now, the north side is still heavily defended, but everything else is just gone. Just absolutely gone. So anyway, it looks like the... I mean, the game ended. I'm guessing, considering army value stuff, that it was indeed Drone's team that won. So... This is actually kind of distracting. I'm more distracted because I realize that I, don't, I, mean, I might be missing the next round of games because of this. But anyway, continuing along, at the very least, it looks like we are seeing 400 manage to come in with a bit of a saving saving stroke here with these fleas. Whether it'll be enough is remaining to be seen. I mean, there are a lot of sites coming in here which will be spotted by the fleas if the fleas were to actually find them. And indeed they do, and the sites, however, are able to take care of all the fleas before any follow-up forces come in here. So the sites essentially get out unscathed. And again, at the same time, there's just this big push with two Dantes, because... Might as well bring out the big guns to help take care of this big defense emplacement. I mean, yeah, that kind of makes sense, actually. Dante's coming in. Should be able to start wiping this out. Yeah, there's the servers down. Crabs don't really have a chance. I mean, there's a lot of money being spent to actually get rid of the northern expansion, but it does get rid of the northern expansion. And again, the south side is under heavy assault, like heavy, continuous assault. There's nothing really stopping that. So I don't see this really going at all well. And there's the iris. No, they are some of the cornea. Just a series of corneas. Not even going for mobility. Just going for having in-place cloaking. Because why not? That just creates a nice defensive position you can develop from. Kind of makes sense. And, oh, nice tremor coming in here. To help deal with these crabs. Getting rid of their tower. Because, yeah, the tremor does not care. Just wipes out, cleans off all this terraforming. And that should even things up enough to allow for team the Goobers to actually take this on. I mean, at this point, with 50 metal per second advantage, they might as well... Do they? Okay, they have Singularity Reactor as well. That's giving them a lot of overdrive. Two Singularity Reactors, in fact. We're going primarily just for Striders. They do have an Anti-Nuke up just in case, but that's not going to be relevant at this point. I mean, the Western team does not have a Trinity going. It's not... I mean, it's not a bad idea to get it, but yeah, there's no Trinity being built up by the Western team, by Team Spark from Manu. It's just really a matter of how much more can be pushed in, and it looks like... Okay, never mind. I've... I can't, can't watch this anymore because the room got reused. Please don't reuse rooms. I cannot see what's going on if you do. All right, we're on round five. And the last round, apparently. Okay, never mind. I guess it's not seven rounds. It's round five. Last round. I guess Goobers versus Fireplug. Which one's the actual best standing match? Because... I think it's Goobers versus Fireplug. Okay, Goobers and... Yeah, Goobers and Fireplug. Okay, so I think that's what we're gonna get. Gonna get. 
And no, I mean, please, seriously, if you're organizing your, your rooms, make new rooms for every game and name them tournament. Although I realize Drone's not going to do that because Drone is never helpful because Drone hates me. But for everyone else who doesn't hate me, yeah, please do that. All right, so I was going to do the intro and then we'll get back. <laughs> 